mis amores, primeramente les quería dar las gracias por apoyar a mi libro y todo lo que yo hago. Yo quería hacer este libro porque mi abuelita mamamina, ella me enseñó a hablar el español desde que yo era chiquitita, como once. Y ya yo tengo mis hijos y yo les quiero enseñar a hablar el español como mamamina me enseñó porque hablar el español me ha ayudado en muchos instantes en mi vida, te digo. Yo sé que este libro también les va a ayudar mucho a tus hijos, a tus amistades o a ti misma. Gracias por apoyar todo lo que yo hago y que Dios los bendiga y que tengan un buen día. ¿Esto qué es? ¿Es un libro? Ok, pero mira, primero vamos a hablar del libro porque vamos a enseñarles cómo usar el libro. Ok, so, I'm explaining to Eleven, she loves to jump into this book and she understands that I made this book and she understands this is her and her brother and it excites her whenever she reads it. <laughs> Ever since she was born, I started to implement Spanish. Even though she wasn't able to speak, I just knew that subconsciously it was staying into her mind. And I'm seeing the same thing with Sky. So when I tell him, vámonos, like he understands, okay, that means we're going. So it's never too early or too late to teach your kids Spanish or English. The number one thing is you as the parent, you carry so much power in your child's learning. So your child doesn't know anything, okay? They're relying on you to be consistent in reading them this book every day, even if it's just for 10 to 15 minutes, okay? Because they have such a short attention span, so they don't really focus for that long anyways. So you have to be consistent, and you as the parent, you also need to learn the translations. So for example, For horse, the translation is caballo. If you don't speak Spanish or you don't know how to read Spanish, you may read it as caballo, you know? And if you're teaching your child caballo when it's caballo, uh, because two L's make the Y sound, I would suggest as the parent, you need to learn the translations before you even open this book, first and foremost, because it's going to look, look, this is how it's going to look. Oh my gosh, dame mi teléfono once, por favor. She's my little climber. But this is how it's going to look if you are trying to do this um, on the fly. You're trying to learn the translations as you go. So, okay, so imagine you are opening the book and you're trying to show your child, okay, it says, yes, please. And you don't know how to say that in Spanish. So you're looking at your phone like, oh, how do I translate this? Google Translate. How do I pronounce this? And what? Look at how your child's looking at you. Look at how she's looking at you. She like, what? <laughs> you should already know this, mom. What, what are you doing? You know, like they're gonna be looking at you crazy. So you need to already know the translation so that when I open the book, I say, okay, ¿cómo se llama esto? Cangrejo. Cangrejo, y en English? Crab. Good girl. ¿Y cómo se llama esto? Ballena, well, ¿y cómo se llama esta? A uh, turtle. Turtle, ¿y en español? Tortuga. ¿Cómo? Tortuga. Tortuga, good girl. ¿Y esto cómo se llama? A, 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 a fish. No, estos. A fish. Fish, ¿y en español? A gallo. Pescado, ok. ¿Y esto cómo se llama? A starfish. Starfish, ¿y en español? A estrella. Estrella de? Mar. Mar, good job, boy. So that's one example of how we go through the book. So this is why you need to know the translations beforehand because look at how she's she's in her mind, she's already translating. She's trying to put definitions to the, to the um, animals that she's seeing. She don't have time for her mama to be on the phone looking up how to pronounce it. Like, she, she don't have time for that. So you as the parent, you gotta be on point with that. This is the thing about the definitions as well. And this is how she still talks to this day. I'll ask her, what color is this? What animal is this? She uses the English and the Spanish translations as though it is one word. So we'll look, notice how she'll say the color. ¿Qué color es este? Es No, ¿qué color? ¿Qué color es? Es rojo red. Rojo red. ¿Y qué color es este? 
Orange is not fine. What color is this? Amarillo, yellow. Good girl. Do you see how she says them both as one? I don't ask her what's the English one, what's the Spanish one. She knows which one's English and Spanish, but she's using them both as one definition, you know, so it stays in her mind. Okay, so the next thing is numbers. This is the thing that has really helped with her counting, especially now that she's. ¿Cuántos años tienes tú? Dile más recio allá, diles. Tres años. Tres años? Yeah. Wow. Ella tiene tres años. Now that she's three years old, she can count things more. Like she'll be like, oh, there's three rocks. There's four butterflies. Like, so this is a really great exercise to do. So, ¿cuántos arco hay? ¿Cuántos hay? Uno. Uno, okay. ¿Cuántas tortugas hay? Cuéntalo con tu mano. Good girl. ¿Y cuántas camisas hay? Una, dos, tres. Ok. ¿Y cuántas ranas hay ahí? Una, dos, tres, cuatro. Cuatro. Ok. ¿Y cuántos pescados hay? Una, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. No, there was just cinco. You, you counted cinco two times. So it's just uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. ¿Y cuántas estrellas hay ahí? Good girl. Okay, ¿cuántas manzanas hay aquí? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. Good girl. ¿Y cuántas mariposas hay aquí? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve. No, nada más hay ocho, mamá. Tú contaste esta dos veces. Hay uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho. Good girl. ¿Y cuántos patos hay aquí? Ya yeah, hay nueve, pero mira, es uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve. Tienes que contar cada pato que si fuera uno así, ¿ok? Ok, ¿y cuántos corazones hay aquí? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. ¡Good job! ¡Good job, Once! ¿No te pica la nariz? You're so smart. Oh my goodness, she's so smart. You see how she was able to do that? And she counts it one by one. Um, she also knows this in English very easily, but I'm trying to get her to master her Spanish. So I have her, I speak to her more in Spanish than I do in English, actually. I don't know if you could see it with the glare. But I have the translations of the numbers in English and Spanish, and I also have the translations of what, what each item is. So as you're going down, you tell her cuantas camisas, how many shirts. This is also another tip that I have for parents is speak to your kids in Spanish all the time. You can throw in a little bit of English, you know, if you're in public and you're around people that speak English, cool. But when it's just you guys, speak in Spanish. I know it's something a little bit difficult to implement, especially when you live in the United States. So that's this is why I'm trying to tell you guys that learning Spanish has more to do with the parent than it has to do with the kids because the kids they don't know they'll speak whatever language if you speak to them in gibberish they don't speak in gibberish so <laughs> you speak to them in caveman they gonna be uga booga and you know so they're going off of your vibe so if you as the parent you have to in your mind you have to learn all of these translations before you open the book you have to speak to your kids in Spanish every day. In your day-to-day -day life, as you're driving, you say, Ooh, ¿qué color es ese árbol, Once? ¿Qué color es? Green verde. Green verde. So you see? So as you're exploring life together, away from the book, the book is gone now. But you're taking what you're learning from the book and you are applying it in your day-to-day. -day. ¿Qué color son mis uñas? ¿Qué color es? Rojo red. Rojo red. Okay. ¿Y qué color son tus pantalones? Pink rosa. Oh, pink rosa. Okay, mama. Okay. See, so you just apply it, you know, in your day-to-day -day life. Sometimes it is frustrating. It is hard, you know, because they won't remember the translations and you'll be like, oh, they're not learning. It's not working. Oh, I'm just going to give up, blah, blah, blah. You know, you cannot give up. You have to do this consistently every day or every other day, whatever, but just be consistent 
and eventually she'll go through this whole page and I'll be like, okay, can you want assistant? And in English? Good girl. Y que animal es este? Okay, and in English? A giraffe. Giraffe. Well, do you remember this one? It's an eagle. Eagle. Y en español? A. A. Gui. Gui. Aguila. Aguila. See, so they're not going to get it all the time. You see how she got a little bit frustrated, but you did good. You got a couple right. So they're not going to get it all the time because th these are a lot of animals to remember for a little kid. Like, this is a lot. So um, you have to be okay with some animals they're going to get quickly, and then it's going to take time and consistency for them to learn all of these other animals. So you as the parent, don't get frustrated, don't feel like it's not sticking. You just have to be consistent and you have to be positive. So if they don't get it, don't get mad. Just be like, oh, okay, you didn't get it. Like, that's cool. We're gonna go through it again tomorrow or go through it in another five minutes and see if you remembered it, <laughs> you know? Or if you see that animal in, in person or in public, be like, oh, look, es una águila. Look, once es una águila. It's an eagle over there. Right there? Yeah, right there. You see the eagle? It's una águila. I don't see it. You don't see it because it's not here. <laughs> but just like you're implementing that in your day to day, and then they start to remember it a little bit better. A lion. A lion. Un qué? Lion. Good girl. Are you a lion king? Yeah. Tu eres? Yeah. <gasps> Rawr. 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 Whoa. A ver, hazlo bien. Wow, ella es un león. Ooh, mira la leona, mira la, ooh, okay. I think it's a tiger, it's a tiger. It's a tiger. Yeah. ¿Y qué color es el tiger? Orange, Orange, naranja. Ooh, she's smart, she's a smart girl. So, like, this has taken me, she's three years old right now. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna be four in a couple months. But I've been working on this since she was two. So it's been, it's taken like a year and some, and she's really stuck with a lot of different animals. I am trying to teach her a couple of new animals in this book. Um, so I'm also working with her through this book. But the first thing that you need to do is you need to master the basics. And this is definitely a beginner's basic book. Here, as you can see in my author's note, I have my Mama Mina. And Mama Mina is the woman that raised me. While my parents were working very hard, my parents are both, um, they both came from different countries, from Iran and Mexico when they came here. They worked super hard to provide for us, but as you understand, if you're working hard providing, you know, somebody has to take care of the kids. So my mom, Mina, really stepped into that role and she's like a mom to me. And she basically raised me from when I was a baby up until I was like, ready to graduate from college and I moved out and stuff like she literally raised me so growing up she made me learn Spanish and she was like and I was hesitant because growing up in the United States in LA you know you want to learn English so you could be cool with you know your fellow peers you know speaking Spanish like oh that's for the the immigrants I don't want to speak Spanish you know so it was shunned on to learn but she like she would tell me yo no te voy a dar de comer así que tú tienes que hablar el español and i was like oh my goodness she basically said if you don't speak spanish i'm not gonna feed you so you need to learn spanish so you know as a kid i'm like oh dang like i really gotta learn spanish so that's basically what um pushed me to learn it and then as i got into my 20s and i started traveling the world more i started meeting different types of people. I learned how much I appreciate my Mama Mina for teaching me Spanish and teaching me about my roots because through your language, you learn about your ancestors. You can connect with people that are also, you know, with Latin descendant, you know? I lived in Miami. Um, being Mexican, you know, Cubans don't speak like Mexicans, they speak like, Oye, me papi, que hace tu, oh my, you know, they, that's how they talk. <laughs> so, and then in Mexico, we, we speak a little bit more slow, like, 
Orale, wey, así es la cosa. You know, like there's a different accent to every Latin country. But because I know the basics of Spanish, I was able to communicate with Cubans that are speaking a mile a minute, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so one time I went to Italy and this was literally on the day that I was going to fly back to LA. And I went to the beach, just a little beach stop before I head back to the plane. My bag was right here. And then I went, you know, just to go closer to the water. As I leave for like five minutes, this guy who I had seen pacing back and forth, he literally went through my luggage, stole my phone, stole my wallet, like stole everything like that I essentially needed. He left the clothes, he left the souvenirs, he left like, he didn't care about none of that. But he took my essentials. He left my passport, so I appreciate him for that. <laughs> so I was able to go back, but I was speaking to the locals and I was telling them in Spanish, alguien robó mi teléfono, robaron mi dinero, necesito ayuda, por favor ayúdame. And you know, they speak Italian over there, so because there's a lot of Latin root words in Italian and in many different languages, even Portuguese, Brazilian, this guy was able to understand what I was saying. So <laughs> he's speaking Italian to me. I kind of understand some of the words. I was speaking to him in Spanish and he's understanding some of the words and he's able to get me to a computer and get me to a phone so I can call my family, cancel my cards, I can, you know, I can locate the nearest airport. This guy was a lifesaver, and then he pretty much located me to the nearest train, and I was able to go to the airport where they helped me, and I was pretty much good at that point. But the part of this story that makes me have a full circle moment is the fact that Mama Mina taught me Spanish. And because she taught me Spanish and forced me to speak it, when I was in different situations that were kind of like life or death in a way, um, I was able to get myself out of it because I spoke Spanish. There's definitely a language barrier. And because of that language barrier, we feel like we can't connect with many different people. But when you break down that barrier and you start to learn the languages of different um, migrating countries, now you can connect and now you can do business. Now you can have stable relationships. Now you can feel safe in different countries because you feel like you're a local because you know the language, you know what's up, you know what's good. So speaking Spanish has been such a blessing and I'm definitely going to be teaching my kids Spanish from the moment that they're babies till they are grown. And um, what I did wanna reiterate is the reason why I'm teaching my kids English and Spanish is because I noticed that if I would take them, I would take her to soccer practice or gymnastics and the coach is speaking in English because all the kids are obviously American. And she wasn't understanding what they were saying because I'm teaching her Spanish strictly. So what I learned when she was about two years old was you cannot just teach her Spanish, you have to teach her English and Spanish. So how do you say each sentence for each language? And you got to do it at the same time. And I know it's confusing, it's hard on the parent as well as the child, but eventually they're going to get it. And eventually they are going to be on the top of their class, on the top of, you know, just in societal terms, like socially, they're going to be on top because they can break those different barriers that majority of the kids cannot. And one of the saddest things that's happening right now, guys, is that a lot of Latinos um, that their parents came, migrated from this country, so now they're second generation um, here in this country. So, and they speak Spanish, but then the third generation, which is our children, they're not teaching them Spanish. And we're losing our language. And this is the sad part. And I really urge people that are second generation, third generation Latinos, um, that we don't lose our culture. 
because these kids really need this language. Just like it helped you in your own ways in your life, it's gonna help your kids. And I know it's hard, everybody's working, everybody has their own lives, ain't nobody got time to read a book for 10 minutes and learn translations and do all that. Like, ain't nobody got time for that. Like, just let the teachers in kindergarten and in elementary school teach them whatever. Like, I get that that's easy for you right now as the parent, but you're affecting their future because you're being selfish because you don't want to do that hard work that your parents or your grandparents did for you to learn the language, you know? So it literally just takes for you as the parent to say, hey, I'm ready. I'm going to dedicate myself to speaking to my kids in Spanish for them to learn both languages at the same time and for them to know their culture and their roots. And if you are not Latino and you just want to learn Spanish, so you're picking up the book and you're learning the different translations and how do you pronounce them and stuff, kudos to you because now your kid is gonna learn, new, is gonna be bilingual and it's not even their culture. So now when they go in the workforce, they are gonna be paid two times more than just a regular English speaking person. And bling blau, that's what's up.